What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at this 2023 Mercedes-Benz C43 AMG. This one's finished off in Starling Blue Metallic. MSRP is around $67,000. Big shout out and thank you to Hendrick Mercedes Northlake for providing this nice Mercedes for today's video. Take a look at their website, links down below. Underneath the hood of the 2023 Mercedes-Benz C43 AMG, you're going to find a 2.0 liter inline four cylinder turbocharged motor. You can see that top mounted turbo on the left side, and this also features a mild hybrid system. Overall, it pumps out 402 horsepower with 369 pound feet of torque, and it's paired to a nine speed 9G Tronic automatic transmission. This does have the 4Matic all wheel drive system. Curb weight's around 3,900 pounds. Zero to 60 is 4.5 seconds and it can do the quarter mile in 13 seconds at 107 miles per hour. This car runs on a 17.4 gallon fuel tank, so you're looking at 19 miles per gallon in the city with 25 out on the highway. Overall length is 188.6 inches with a wheelbase at 112.8. Height is 57.1 and width is 71.8 inches. And then now moving on to the exterior styling with the 2023 C43. This blue color is definitely a very nice color. You can see these blacked out designs for the LED headlights. They also have a check mark style for the daytime running light. A lot of smooth body work as we make our way to the grill. You're gonna see these vertical slots along with a massive Mercedes logo with a forward facing camera along with parking sensors. And then of course we get an AMG badge. On the far side, you're gonna see more trim and black parking sensors and a functional air inlet to let air pass through the bumper. You can see more openings all down below to provide maximum cooling to the engine as well as all the intercoolers and radiators. And overall it has a very performance focused look. And I love all the bodywork, especially as we make our way to the hood, we're gonna see a lot of cool body contours. We get another Mercedes logo up on the upper portion of the front bumper. And there's just more smooth body lines all around the front. Making our way to the side profile, this gets a set of 19 inch wheels, finished off in a multi-spoke design. We have the diamond cut along with metallic silver and a massive set of brake calipers. You can also see the drilled rotors up in front and then wrapped in a Michelin wheel. The front fender is gonna have a badge for turbo and electrified and really clean lines all surrounding this wheel. You can see the side skirt has a pretty aggressive splitter cutting out of it and then more sharp lines in the lower portion. The door handles have a two-tone design with the body colored in chrome and then we get more body colored on the mirror caps with an integrated turn signal as well as a camera and then all chrome trim surrounding the windows with blacked out B pillars. You can see the sunroof up on top and then as you make your way to the side profile, the C-Class sedan is a smaller sedan out there. However, it has really good proportions all around. I like the overall dimensions and I think it has a classy yet sporty vibe. Making our way towards the rear, you can see some nice bulges in the rear fenders, smooth body lines fading from the roof line down into the trunk, and then we get a nice set of LED taillights. Sunken into the bodywork really nicely with your C43 badge, small lip spoiler along with all of your badging for AMG and Mercedes, and I like how clean the rear end is. Not too crazy. And then down below, you're gonna see all of your parking sensors within the bumper, gloss black and silver throughout this rear diffuser with a quad exhaust system. I think overall the styling is definitely conservative for the C43. However, it's muscular and super classy at the same time. Taking a look at the key fob now, we get lock, unlock, along with a trunk release button, and then some nice silver trim. Now just grabbing the door handle, it will automatically unlock. We can take a look at the black leather interior. There's a lot of silver trim throughout it. And if we make our way to the door panel, you can see some smooth black leather up above, some more synthetic material on the center, a little bit of padding for your armrest, and then silver trim surrounding your window controls and mirror controls. You get the release handle with lock and unlock, all of your power seat controls, along with memory seating, Burmester audio system, and then storage down below. We get AMG written out on the door sill, lumbar support on the seat itself, and then a really nice design for this leather material. I like all the stitching to it, pretty comfortable and sporty looking. Makes its way all the way up the backrest into these headrests, and then spinning around, we get somewhat of a flat bottom design with perforated leather on the sides and silver trim. And then now inside the C43, keep my foot on the brake, we can go ahead and fire it up. Mm -hmm. 
taking a look at the gauge cluster now. This is a full LCD to screen and it is configurable. You can see your fuel and speedometer on the left side, and then attack over on the right side, and a configurable screen right in the center. If I go ahead and swipe this icon up and down, you can see all sorts of different in-things of information which will come up throughout the center of the screen. So pretty nice just how usable this is. Got some pretty cool designs on it. Then if I toggle the home icon, we can actually change the entire display. Going into sport mode gives you a little bit more performance focused design with everything that you're gonna need for performance driving. We also have this one for super sport, which is a very cool design. As you can see, the tack is just huge. And then if we go back into the home screen, we have the individual, which is a little bit more relaxed, and then a full screen navigation system. There's also more for driver's assistance and service and things like that. So definitely a pretty cool configurable screen for a Mercedes like this. Now, along with the screen, you can adjust your drive mode right over here and see a little bit different design on the screen as well. It'll come up on the right side with all the different things that are gonna be changing. And then on the center screen, all these are gonna come up with a very cool depiction for all different drive modes. If we take a look at the steering wheel on the right side, we have similar controls that you just saw, which will actually operate the screen over on the right side. And then you have more controls under that for Bluetooth and audio and volume. And then on the left side, we have cruise control settings. Now down below here, you can toggle quite a few things. Your exhaust valve on and off, then you can toggle the screen itself to change what you would like to adjust. So I really like just how you can easily toggle whatever you'd like in the car and really customize how you'd like to switch up all of your drives. We do have paddle shifters on the back side of the steering wheel with a pretty cool look and feel. Your gear selector on the right side, turn signal stock on the left. And then to the left of the steering wheel, we can see headlight controls, electronic parking brake, and you can see that purple ambient lighting. Really cool design for the air vents, heads up display system, and then some nice smooth black leather running across the dashboard. I like all the air vent designs, then a really cool looking plastic material, kind of looks like a carbon fiber look. And then in the center, taking a look at the infotainment screen. Very cool design overall. If we just toggle the home icon, you can get a full screen navigation. If I tap the car icon up above, you see a few different items. Then you have things down below. If you hit menu AC, you can see everything right here for the zones and everything. And you also have your temperature and fan speed that will always stay here in the bottom. Going back to the home screen, underneath all that, we have a few more toggles. If I hit AMG, it comes up with all of our drive modes. Then hitting the car icon, you can see some more information within the vehicle. We have hazards on off as well as a volume. And then if I go ahead and put us into reverse, you're gonna see that backup camera pop up with a top-down view on the left, and you can easily adjust all the different camera angles. So I like just how simple everything is, really good depictions of everything. So it definitely is a good assistance for the car. Tapping the P button, we're back into park, and you can hit the home screen once again. I can swipe from the top, also getting to this screen. Heads up display, you can turn on and off. And then if I hit home again, you can see a few more items. So if I go under settings within the car, everything's gonna pop up with what you want to adjust. We also have your apps that will come up in the car, a few different items here. You have your radio and different media things, of course, Sirius, and then a few more media things, and then performance right in the center. You're able to take a look at the vehicle. You can see engine, get a really cool readout, and then consumption for the car. Underneath all of that, we have a really smooth design area. If you push this forward, it opens up. We get two cup holders down here, along with plugs and a ton of storage space, and then wireless phone charging. Then we can easily close that. You can see more ambient lighting, nice armrest design, and then a pretty good sized glove box in the center with two plugs. On the far right side, we can open this up. You have a pretty good sized glove box, as you would expect. And then one last look at the interior. I love Mercedes' new massive screen. It just looks super elegant in here. And it is a really nice car to be in. Really good use of materials. Black headliner with a manual sunshade. All of our LED dome lights, along with some more ambient lighting, and then a frameless mirror. Moving on to the rear seat space. If I grab the door, open it up, door panels finished off just like we saw up front, all the same padding and materials. And then inside, you're gonna see all the same materials with the smooth black leather and contrast stitching. This can seat three people. You can pull the center one down, get a nice armrest here, and you can pop that out for a tablet holder and then pop it again for your cup holders. There are air vents back here, along with just a little bit of storage space and then storage on the back side of these seats. All right, hopping into the back of the C43. So this is kind of a mid-size sedan from Mercedes. This is actually very roomy. I'm five foot 11, plenty of headroom with the driver's seat at my height, good knee room and leg room. Both armrests are in a great place. And since this has a very traditional profile with a normal roof line, the windows are pretty large in here. So it feels pretty open and roomy. 
And of course, with those climate vents, that is a nice touch. Of course, you have dome lights along with grab handles. So they're pretty nice back seat. And then moving on to the trunk, if I just press the button underneath the Mercedes badge, it's gonna automatically pop open and we get a very large trunk. It's very squared off in here, which is kind of surprising for a smaller sedan. And you can even open up the bottom to reveal hidden storage space. So definitely pretty roomy. And then I really like on each side, we have an electronic button. If I go ahead and press that, these seats are gonna get out of the way. I think that's a really fancy touch instead of just having ugly plastic poles. So a nice touch of luxury for the Mercedes. And then if we go through the side, they fold down nice and flat, revealing plenty of cargo area and a nice opening into that trunk. All right, setting off now. <laughs> this thing is pretty darn quick. That four cylinder sounds really good too. And you can feel down low that hybrid power. It's like 12 horsepower or something like that, but that low speed, you can just feel that instant torque. So, so far it's pretty cool. Right now I'm in the Sport Plus mode. I got the gauge cluster and the heads up in the uh, coolest modes. Pretty sweet car handling. <laughs> pretty darty. It really is light on its toes and feels pretty nimble to drive. Seems like a pretty fun car, quite honestly. The steering is nice and sharp. The brakes have good feedback. <laughs> yeah, this is a fun sedan just to kind of rip around and have some fun. It doesn't feel like a four-cylinder at all. Man, this thing is a pretty healthy little car. Now, if we toggle it down into the comfort mode, go back into auto, get out of that cool screen, just go to the nav. I do love how you can just configure everything just to make this feel cool or feel relaxed. Even the heads-up display can tone that down. But now in comfort mode, normal things, I mean, great view out, huge windshield, mirrors all do a great job just letting you know what's going on. It's a Mercedes, you know, at the end of the day, it feels like a luxury, pretty high-end car. It's not all too expensive, you know, under 70 grand, good visibility over your right and left shoulder. I mean, this is just a familiar, like normal car to be in. The seats are pretty comfortable. I like how the adjustments work. It's not too hard to get used to them on the door but it's pretty nice. And I think the fit and finish is also pretty good. Mercedes really does do a great job just giving you the luxury, giving you something a little bit above and beyond and just on that classy side. And this car kind of does that. In automatic, it'll rev it to about 4,000 to 5,000 if you're just slowly getting up to some speed. So it's certainly gonna use the engine that it has. And then when you go to make a three-point turn, I will say the turning radius isn't the greatest. You really only can turn the steering wheel like one or two locks. And it does take a little bit for the transmission to engage. So that's one thing you may notice. Yeah, like I can't make a three-point turn here. So turning radius isn't the best. I would assume the all-wheel drive system just kind of limits it just a tad. So let's go back to all the cool screens. I think it's just so cool, all the cool stuff you get in here. Man, so many different toggles to press. But with all that said, <laughs> yeah, this thing is fun to drive. I think the interior is also pretty easy to use. You know, it's taken me a little getting used to Mercedes, but quite honestly, the new stuff, there's a little bit less redundancies than previous generations. So it seems like it's kind of easy to use, but you still get all the fun tech. Let's go back to Super Sport now. Yeah, man, that is not full throttle, obviously, being in a new car, but this thing starts to move for sure. And the transmission is lightning quick. I feel like from a driver's perspective, it's just a fun car. You can play within the sport modes. It's never back braking. It doesn't like really beat you up or anything, but it's stiff enough to let me know that I'm in something fun to drive. And then just one rotate of a dial, you can just feel the whole car just settle down and we are just relaxing. So I like how you got the sporty, you got the luxury in a pretty nice package. Seems like a pretty well designed car with a lot of fun factor. All right, so turning around to my honest thoughts and perspective. Wow. So that was like half throttle. I love the transmission with the hybrid. There are just no interruptions with gear changes. Normally first to second gear in a lot of cars, it's like it winds out first and then it goes. This just keeps going. <laughs> Man, 
has some good sounds to it. A few little gurgles and pops on the exhaust system. It's a pretty fun car. Now, if you're new to the channel, my wife and I actually have an Audi RS3 on order, and it is basically this exact same car. It's the same price, pretty much the same performance level. So this is a direct competitor with a car that I'm gonna be having in my own garage very shortly. I haven't driven the new RS3 yet. I'm just buying it because that's what we wanna buy. But you can tell this car is gonna be a strong competitor to that, and once I get mine, I would love to revisit this car to see how they really stack up. But as far as normal driving, this is a fun car because it's roomy enough in here, big enough in here to not feel like just a compact car. So it'll be interesting if the RS3 feels a little smaller than this, I guess we'll have to see. But this feels just like a nice car to be in. You can relax in it and just enjoy driving in a premium Mercedes at the end of the day. So it feels nice, it has a refinement. We're in Sport Plus, all the fun modes right now. And even in this setting, like I said, it's not back breaking, so it just feels nice. It feels like a car daily driving, no big deal, highway miles, commuting, this can be fun. But when you start shifting with the manual, you know, throw it in some turns, like, <laughs> how did a car that was just grandpa's Mercedes turn into something like this? So there definitely is something to it, but it does give you a nice blend of just the luxury, the tech, and genuinely a fun performance car. Now, being a four-cylinder, I'm surprised it doesn't drive like one. I think with the mild hybrid system, it really makes it have the performance that you want, and it doesn't feel like it's stressing. Red line's around 7,000 RPM, and I'm barely going, you know, four or 5,000 RPM with it just to keep it a little low, being brand new, and honestly, it just rips. Gosh. It genuinely is a quick car. It's got power. This is a cool car. I've never really had this on the radar as something to get. The RS3 and the M340 were always my top picks for these mid-level sports sedans. But this is kind of the one under the radar. It's got a little more conservative style for sure. It's a little bit more laid back in the design. And it of course can tone down nicely and just be a comfortable, luxurious car. I like this. I think this is a pretty cool concept, cool idea of a car. And driving it today just feels roomy, easy to use, easy to operate great interior tech fit and finish and everything and honestly like i don't think you can complain if you're looking for a cool sedan you know sub 70 grand nothing too crazy this is something to get you got the fun performance you got the style you got the luxury i've been smiling and enjoying this i've been enjoying this car and i could totally see picking one of these up it's definitely a good car to get i don't really have anything i don't like about it mercedes might take a little bit getting used to all the interior tech the way the buttons work and everything like that but I think once you figure out how to use it, which it's really not all too hard, I think you'll like it as well. Other than that though, this is a sweet option. Never really uh, looked at one of these before, but I'm glad I did. That is it then for the 2023 C43 AMG. Is this a real AMG car? Honestly, it's pretty darn awesome. Big shout out and thank you once again to Mercedes-Benz Northlake for providing this car for today's video. Take a look at their website, link down below. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next video.